first uh, session of uh, our i hope you can see me good and hear me good or notice everything is visible or not it's my first time so first of all we are going to discuss a little about uh, what is uh, pranayam basically is usually pranayam where people think that pranayam is more like a breath work or like only it's about breathing but pranayam is more deeper and more than just breathing usually pran prana are basically five kind of prana in our body and pranas are the deep knowledge inside our body which controls our whole system when we born the first time we take the breath and that's why we are alive here that's why we are having that some sub kind of sub information in our system which is somewhere leading us what we are today it means that prana are basically an electricity and energy which is controlling our mental and physical both stages so if somehow we can maintain or we can say control prana means the vital energy inside us and the yama means controlling over the control having the control over your pranas means your life energy so if somehow we have the control over our life life energy we can for sure become fully aware which is the most important part of yogic practice or for the good mental and physical when i say mental it's like prana having full awareness of your prana is 100% control over your mental health because as i explained that pranas are the energy which is like intelligence it controls our nervous system at the same time your whole mental state from the this is this thing we understand that we need to somehow bring that uh, control in our soul through the prana practice where we will automatically have basically full control over our mental and full awareness to our system i hope everything is clear from this and uh, in the in the in the last session we will have questions or questions can be asked in the message group as well as uh, personally if you want to now there are many many different practices which we can do to control our prana or to bring the full awareness to our system is same like uh, uh, we say that anger is bad for us but anger is truly bad for us or maybe anger is not the main issue but uh, the main issue is that we are not aware when we are angry for example when we get angry on little child sometime to correct him we are aware of our anger and that does not make any difference in our breathing or our mental state but when we get angry on a certain thing on some people on something then we lost ourselves and we collapse anger lust and greed are the ways to how like it says in gita we must conquer our anger conquer our greed and the lust however the root is deep down is bring anger so how we can come 
over from all the speculation which happens within our soul. For example, what prana doing is, your mind is doing is to you. Are you, sometimes we think about, uh, uh, we are fully free, we are free. But how much are you free? Have you ever think about how much are you really free today? You think, I do certain things, I have certain habits of my life. But how really these habits or the habitual you are for the good or bad things, I'm not saying bad things, bad habits, but also good habits. Are these good habits are really you? Or maybe they are also subconscious information, which is always controlling our mental health. If we understand and we have control over our prana, then we can have control automatically over our mentality. Means we can have full awareness all the time by only having control over prana, by only having the control of the prana. Because as we all know that when we get angry, our breathing change. The breathing, mind, and the body are very well connected with each other. When we get angry, how, how this you said to me, and our breathing is become faster. When we are calm, when we are relaxing, our breathing is also relaxing. However, when we having certain different things, the breathing is always changing its form. It means that mind and breathing, they are both works together. Your mind helping your breathing and your breathing helping your mind. Now, usually, with our normal, unstable lifestyle and habits, we somewhere deep down damage our breathing. As the child was born, as the old, old, old generation used to breathe, now people are breathing differently. You will see that now people are breathing shorter, shallow breathing, very small breathing. And when you will see a little child, he has deep breathing in one way. Because why are we having this shallow breathing or quick breathing on ourselves, the prana? Because everything in this Kali Yuga, we want quickly, you know? Before, simple example, like before we used to watch one big video on somewhere, some important topic. Nowadays, we have this TikTok, Reels, and all the other YouTube shorts kind of thing. Now from this, we understand that even people cannot wait one minute to look, wait for the another one to come and let's watch the other one. This is not only one particular thing that happening with the watching the videos, so happening with all the certain things, all the certain things. For example, somebody said something and we quickly having the certain reply for certain things before even thinking what basically it is, how, how truly it is needed to be spoken or it is worth to speak in. But how this happening? Because of the subconscious information in ourselves slowly, slowly developing in that way that our subconscious mind is harming your own self. Now, for example, if a kid, a little boy coming and harming you, then we can say a little kid is uh, harming you by, by doing something. But here we're looking at the other individual personality. Our mind, our brain is so powerful that one thing which is very painful can be very joyful for another person. And for somebody, it can be joyful thing can be very painful. For example, if somebody uh, offers you a piece of cake, you maybe get very happy or joyful. Oh, what a beautiful cake. 
because your subconscious having this information that cake means joy, that love, that happiness is connected with the celebration. Or on the other side, if, if somebody, oh, there's a sugar in it and there's a lot of uh, uh, refined flour and this and that, and if somebody offered that person a piece of cake, that can turn into the very big uh, tragedy or what happened, I, what I am having today. Why? Because we have subconscious information in ourselves and how this subconscious information is developing and having the memory and keep working in your entire body, even so quickly that somebody says and you have the reaction through your entire system. How this happening? Have you ever thought that for certain thing you just hear and you have certain reply automatically ready for that thing? or good feeling or bad feeling for this. For example, somebody come with the, with the piece of a cigarette nearby you and he offered to offer you and suddenly your brain goes all the way off. What are you doing? I can't even breathe, this is so bad. Why, how this happens so quickly? It happens through the prana in our body. Have you ever seen the old people those hands are like shaking and there is a, if you go to this medical test, they say there is nervous thing happening in your body, but the same nervous strength having the other person and he is very stable. His hands are very stable. Why? Because the prana, the air force which works, the vital energy which works to control that particular thing, it is not stable like this. You put your hand like this, and uh, you judge the, judge the health of this particular thing or your mind, you know? We judge, the, we judge by doing this. But have you ever tried to put yourself in one particular posture, in one particular day, and trying to look at you that how much you are shaking? How much shaking we having without, uh, I'm not talking about physical shaking, but here, the topic comes, the mental shaking, or where we're feeling like how, how many different things happening inside us, which is stopping us to do certain things. Yes. So here we understand that if we have control over pranas, we can have full awareness of ourselves. And full awareness brings 100% recovery from any mental problem. Now, usually we all are physically seems very healthier. And if we go to the checkup, doctor will say, oh, you are perfectly fine. This physical body might be perfectly fine. But what about the person inside? The one who is uh, not calm, the one who is uh, looking for the peace, the one who is always looking for the joy, the happiness. Somewhere, the modern science, or we as a human can feel that, oh, we are the most developed people compared to all the animals and other, and we having more better luxurious life with all the uh, comforts around, we having the table, we having the air conditioner, we having the car, we having the plane, we have the phone to call anybody just anywhere. We have everything just which can bring us to joy, right? We have all the luxury around, but still we cannot claim ourselves to be happier even than the animals, you know? However, they don't know about nothing, but somewhere maybe they are more happier, more peaceful, more joy, more, more dancing, more jumping here and there, more than us. So what is the main benefit of doing that all development which is bringing no satisfaction inside. We understand the outer things, 
how beautiful we build everything, wall, this, that, clothes, each and everything, even family. We're trying to best to build our family, kids, uh, husband, wife, spouses, parents. We, we're taking care of all these things, but what exactly coming out of it? With our outer vision to the things, we are not getting any satisfaction. We get satisfaction, then again, we fell off. We get to the one point, okay, now I'm happier, and then one wall breaks. And the flood comes again and demolish all the things. All the yogis and all the specialists, which the scientists of Asian yogis culture, bring this particular information into yogic practice, which is called prana yam. Now the, pri the five prana, which is, has different, different work in our body. If we, with the certain basic practice, we can have control over the prana. We will have the certain control over our mindset over our mentality. Then the things which happens quickly, they will happen subtly. Then you start to live 100% in one way. Then you start to have the bodha. Means you start to have that wisdom in each thing. When you see one particular book or one particular person, you will able to understand the deeper secret of that things. How? Because your mentality is so stable, is so stable, is so calmer that you will capture more than what you seeing around. What, for example, what I'm saying, you will capture more than that. You will deep down that more, which will come through pranayama. Now there are many different practices of pranayama, but here I'm trying to bring only very essential, which has the most powerful benefit to the body and to the mental health. With all the research I've done through my career and all the researches which many yogis have practiced. We will start with always we start breathing practice or the pranayama practice with some fast inhale and exhale, which is usually called as a bastrika pranayama. Bastrika is uh, very easy to do, but the thing is that it is easy to do and not need to be done more like let's do this 200 times or 500 times. So this is a basic exercise which is essential. We can increase slowly, slowly, but not too much. It's not needed too much. The more exercise of breathing which needed too much, those who are slower in the, in the way. The practices of the pranayama which need to be done, which are slower, easier for our system. Because somewhere we have to bring our mental health to be more easier rather than to be more energetic. However, for the lazy people, the energetic pranayama can be more beneficial. But again, I'm saying it is not about the energy which you see with the physical body but energy which you have inside coming out of you from inside. And some of the pranayama practice, which I want you at least practice for 10 times, which is basically if somebody having any mental issue or cannot have any concentration, or it is very hard to calm the mind at that particular time or some people complained about that they feel some certain energy 
is uh, bringing them to some particular mode or some people say they feel like uh, somebody's pulling them or this and that which is basically a subconscious information inside your prana which comes out through your own system and it feels like that it's doing somebody else to me however maybe possibly somebody somewhere always everywhere somebody and somewhere controlling your prana you know because you are living in the world and we are all connected with each other so he's saying that nobody controls me this is a true lie you know somewhere but how can we bring this awareness where you have your own control so i will give that particular pranayama as well to practice so that we have control over our mindset at the same time this brings calmness into our system very quickly not only calmness but slowly slowly with the, this this practice concentration and stillness also increases because it increases the moon energy inside our body now we will come from very beginning and then with the with these few lessons with the session we, as we grow we will go more deeper and deeper into the each practice for today we will try to understand that which nostril is sun energy which nostril is moon and which nostril working for which time for give the particular certain energy in ourselves each person you me each person individual having different pattern of breathing nobody breathing in one way all having because all have different karma subconscious information into their samskara that's why we all having a different way of thinking a different way of living a different way of doing the things particularly okay somebody likes to walk on the legs and somebody likes to walk on the hands okay so <laughs> everybody has a different uh, somebody likes to have a spicy food and somebody likes to have some different grilled kind of food you know burnt food so this is a different topic now we will come to the point which nostril is moon energy and which astral is the sun energy so your right nostril is usually believed to be more sun active more fire energy and your left nostril is believed to be more moon energy means the calming relaxing nature by bringing the balance in both of them your body is always maintaining the balance of your normal lifestyle which you're doing because your body is built in such a way it's very typical signs that is built in such a way that is always want to survive so your if you ever ever check your breathing by just putting your finger under over your lip and trying to couple of deep breath in and breathe out you will see that one particular nostril is active right now sometimes both are superly active sometimes right is active and sometimes left is active and if none is active means you are in samadhi <laughs> or you are not anymore means you don't have it. so here we understand that right is the sun energy the left is the moon energy okay sun energy and the moon energy sun is where the fire usually when we having sun active this is very good for doing any physical activity or having meal and other things and when we having our left nostril more active this is more time for have some study or time to sleep or time to do more artistic work kind of thing or trying to calm ourselves usually as the body is very advanced as i said is always judging and comparing or controlling the breathing by the around atmosphere 
So as soon as the body understands that sun is gone down, we start working on the activating our left nostril to bring our energy to be more slim. Okay. But as we all know that we have this white light and the computer and the phone and the other lights coming to our head and our eyes and the skin. Now this is what happening that uh, even it's sunset, it's sun is gone. But uh, we having that uh, uh, that we cannot sleep. Oh, I'm feeling hungry at night. You know, I'm feeling hungry at night. Usually, if you if you ask all people, they, they don't they don't usually used to feel hungry at the night. They used to sleep at the night. But why nowadays even a little child uh, ask for the snacks during the night? Like oh, I want to eat something because feeling the hunger, feeling that need something because the fire, because the right nostril is getting more activated because of our surrounding, which we are somewhere created by our own things. So we also need to work on that. But if you automatically having control over your breathing, then even there is a lots of light, even there is a lots of sun coming towards your face, you know, but you are under your control. You are full aware of that sun is gone, time to sleep. You won't need anything to be sleep, you know. The thing is that some people have this automatically because you can say more advanced, they're more developed or more relaxed in other way. Or some people cannot and they suffer and they're like, oh, I cannot sleep or having this problem, I'm having that problem. At the night, I work more, more better. And the, in the day, I cannot work or this and that, all the certain things. Okay, so this is also a very important point which we having to discuss. Now we understand the left is more like calming, right is more like activating, energizing. Okay, first of all, we are going to practice which pranayam I want you to every day practice for at least 10 times. Now this very easy pranayama and this activates your moon energy. You can do this two times a day as well. Like in the morning, you can do this. You can do this before going to sleep as well because this is going to activate your moon energy. Very easy. You have to bring your, your hand under the Vishnu Mudra. Vishnu Mudra, very easy. Your first two fingers goes under the thumb and the rest remaining two remain as normal so that you can put your right hand on your nose. Now here you have your right nostril which you can close by your right hand. Here you have your ring finger and your little finger which you can use to close your left nostril, right nostril, left nostril. You can do it your own, okay? Now what we will do in this particular practice, you have to breathe in by closing the right nostril through the help of your thumb and inhale through the left nostril and exhale through the right. Again, inhale through the left And exhale through the right. Inhale through the left. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the left. Exhale through the right. Four complete. Inhale through the left. Exhale through the right. Five, inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale. Exhale. And the last inhale. And exhale. Relax. Breathe in full. And breathe out. This is a very ancient practice which instantly bring your mind to the calm position. Anytime, anywhere you're going through any stress, you can just do this 10 or 12 times max. 12 times is enough, okay? Doing 12 times, this it will be enough. You can do three units of 12. We are going to do ten, three units of 10 each day. So you can do in the morning three times, in the evening three times, for all the one particular month. This month, you, well, till the date of 29, when we will end, you have to practice at least for the this month, you will try to practice and you can continue practice if you want to do it longer. This is the first pranayam, which every day we will, every Saturday and Sunday, we will also practice so that you understand clearly. Now, I'm telling you once again, the mudra, it is named as Vishnu mudra, okay? First two fingers under and two fingers out and the thumb. Always, there are some particular rules of doing the pranayama that we always use our right hand. We never use our left hand. And uh, it is not because we clean poop from the left hand. No, this is because we having two lungs here, right and left. And our right lung is a very slightly smaller than the left one. Why? Because we have the heart in the left as well. So a little, a very micro level of the part is smaller than the left one. But that's why yogis always tell us to practice to the right hand. Now, some people can say that hand feel tired, is relaxed, and then again begin with the right hand only. Try to practice with your right hand only. Not, don't try to practice. If you don't have right hand, then this is a different topic. But if you have your right hand, then at least use your right hand only for doing. Because our fingers having the elements and both our elements also working here to bring that certain energy into our soul, okay? This is the pranayama, which you have to practice every day, 10 times, three units. You've done 10 times, then you relax, and then you do 10 times, relax, then you do 10 times and relax. So that's how you will do three units. Now, the important rules which I'm telling about before any practice of pranayama, that first of all, pranayama must be done in the joyful, relaxed mood. Because why are we doing the pranayama? To bring certain information into our prana or into our subconscious information, this certain information, right? That joy, bliss, and love, or you want to bring bad energy to yourself. So it's more likely you have to do it with joy, peace, and love, okay? Now, as I say, love, bliss, and joy, it's also have a different, different levels, okay? Like yogi, observe different kind of bliss. So, this different kind of bliss is going to work different for that particular person. Because when he practicing the pranayama, he trying to have that level of bliss. Understand? That's why practicing yoga and the pranayama and the asanas. When we practice yoga, usually we more look to the physical exercises 
like standing on your hands, jumping on your legs, which animals can do better than us. But yet humans are trying to be animal because they are more joyful maybe. But animals are not yogi. They are not becoming yogi. Yes, they are not getting liberated. They are not observing the bliss in their particular moment. They are not fully aware of what they are doing. They are just doing what they're doing, you know. Only human has this ability of understanding what I'm doing, why I'm doing, and for whom I'm doing. So if you can have this ability, you must use it for good purpose. First rule is very clear about the pranayama that you always and always have to do it in the joyful, peaceful mood. Okay, if you're not feeling joyful in the morning, do it in the afternoon. If you're not feeling good in the afternoon, do it in the evening. If you're not feeling good at the night, call me. I will make you joyful, okay? You have my number. Feel free to call. It's free of cost, okay, friends, okay? It's easy to be joyful. There is no big signs going on here. So, and still, if you don't feel joyful after me, talking to me, then it's impossible, okay? Now, we understood the first important rule that we have always and always practice the pranayama in the joyful mood, blissful mood in one way. But the second of the thing, we never practice pranayama by having any difficulty or having a stress or having any suffocation, you know? <coughs> Some people... I cannot hold, I cannot do this. Oh, I am feeling exhausted. I cannot breathe in. I cannot breathe out. I'm, I'm feeling, <sighs> and I'm, I will be doing this. No, no need to do that time. Get well, get yourself prepared slowly. Do it less, do it good. Do it so that you are not suffocating. Sometimes people pushing extra pressure on the lungs, you know? Lungs are also an organ. Our life, our body is full of things which we have developed slowly, 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 slowly. Now, what you have today, maybe it's not totally developed yet and not ready for that particular practice. So you can reduce, you can always do less. You can always ask guidance from the teacher that this is happening while I'm doing this. So what variant I can do so that I have the same benefit at the same time, I will become more stable with it. That's the second most important rule of the pranayama. First is you understood, you need always make sure that you're doing it joyfully. Second one, you never suffering with pranayama. Pranayama is to bring the bliss and imagine that you're suffering with it. That's what we human do. We bring stress into each and everything. Even something which is very joyful, we will make it stressful. Like nowadays we have celebration. We're having celebration and we made it stressful. Oh, we have to uh, decorate that thing. We have to bring that thing. We have to bring that thing. We have to build that thing to have the celebration. That's what we are doing, right? We, we make it worse what we have to make it good. Doing the celebration means doing it more in the sattvic way, means more simple way. From today, make this rule that you will become simple as possible. Simple as possible. What is harder is to become simple. What is harder, it is to become simple. What is simple? To become confused, to become hardest in the world. It is very simple to become close-hearted, to become hard-hearted. Okay, I don't talk nobody, I don't share nobody, I don't love nobody. It's very, very hard to become simple, super hard to become simple, easier, so that you become like everybody who see you, understands you, feels you have that feeling for you because you become simple as it is. Pranayama has that power to make you simple. Your own energy is 
under you. You can develop it by having control over your prana. Okay. Now the third rule of practicing pranayama, which is very essential, that after doing the pranayama, make sure that you relax. Means, for example, you've done the 10 units. Now, like, like what next, Ajitya? What next? Okay, what to do next? Okay, what happening there? What happening there? No, 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 no. Don't be too quick to the things. Certain change you bringing into yourself, at least give five to 10 seconds to stabilize it, to be more settled down into your subconsciousness. You know, you bring certain energy and now give little time to stable it. It's same like nowadays people are eating while running, eating and walking, drinking and walking, jumping and drinking together, you know, mixing the two different things, four things together, and then hurting ourselves in, in other way. Because you do one particular thing, do it joyfully, blissfully. You've done the one pranayama, now some particular deep breathing in and breathing it out. Breathing in and breathing out. And then when you feel enough, okay, like you went into the one particular meditation and then when you come back, then you look for the next. Okay, now 10 unit more I will do. You know, it's not like 10 unit, relax. Okay, now 10 unit more. 10 unit done. And then you try to observe, try to bring the full juice out of it. Like what happening inside you? What is that thing that you've gone through right now? What exactly things you've gone through? What are you feeling? What is that thing changed inside you? What that thing, other things which was controlling you. Now what that thing that is detaching you, becoming more aware of the things, making you more detached from outer things. What is that particular thing? You have to close your eyes and try to feel that thing. That's very, very important rule. That's very important and very, very hard for people. Usually people do the pranayama and they're like, what next? Bring something else, you know, like a task. This is not a task which you're doing, punching. This is very deep knowledge, very, very deep intelligence you're trying to change inside you. So do it with full awareness. As you've done the pranayama, you try to observe it. You try to calm it. You try to bring it more more under, 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 under to your soul. Here we understand three important rules of pranayama. Once again, I will repeat, feeling joyfully, peacefully, and then practicing pranayama, never suffocating, never feeling any discomfort, any stress. And the third one, is stable, become, becoming that stability at least for five to two breathing after, after doing the pranayama, okay? This is, it in self is very, very essential pranayama practice, which is also can be done anytime and which is also is recommended nowadays by all the uh, modern, modern scientists, scientist people, which is like deep breathing exercises. It itself a very beneficial pranayama because you are giving the full oxygen to your system. Now, when I say pranayama, it is not only oxygen. There is no word to the pranayama in English vocabulary. There is no word of explaining the word pranayama. You can say the vital energy in our body, which is called pranayama, but it is not a vital energy, okay? This is a vital energy. At the same time, it's full energy. You are alive because of the brain. You are just alive. And you're all sub-information 
are through the breathing, which, which we see into like two twins born together and having the same uh, parents going through the same culture, going into the same school, having the same friends and having the same things, having the same toys, same clothes, but yet both are different. Yet both are very different because they have different subconscious information from life to life, from karmas to karmas, but how they have it in their body, how? If somebody say how, the time when they born, this particular breath which they take on that particular time, that information right away went into that particular body. Or you can say that particular prana, or you can say even that particular soul. Prana somewhere compared as a soul to yourself. That it is the main source of the life. That you are alive because of the prana. When you die, the prana left from your body. The prana never dies. The prana never dies. Prana, it is automatically brings the mental stability, but it is beyond science of the mentality. You know, It is not only to bring the stability or calmness or the, or the awareness, but this is a beyond science of yogic culture where you can even experience or have the different glow into yourself through the practice of pranayama, which will, we will practice in the coming classes. Today, we learned about all the things, why we must do the pranayama, what is the prana, how the prana works in our body, what are the facts which you can have if you have the full control over your prana, if you have the understanding of the prana. And we also noted today two points of uh, very important, which is uh, rules that we have to always follow during the pranayama, that we always follow that particular rules. And the second one is uh, daily practicing pranayama. Because we, we don't have any habit to practice the pranayama. But when you come to the yogic culture, only 10% is asana or so-called posture which we are trying to maintain to our physical body. The 90% is all your breathing. Even when you are practicing your asanas, how aware of your breathing, that depends how well is your asana is happening. Or, or the asanas, the posture which you do, what is your breathing at that particular time depends, discuss all about your asana. So we can understand from this point as well that asanas are itself important to bring the stability, but the more important is to awareness of the prana, which comes through the prana yama, means control over your prana. One more thing which we learned today is practice of calming pranayama, okay? The pranayama which activates our moon energy. This sun and moon energy has seen into the all societies, Egyptian, mythological, and, and which you see nowadays, and the old Asian yogis, sun and the moon energy in body is very, 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 very most Asian thing you can have. All the, all the societies which has gone, they, they notice this into one particular time. All the spiritual practices has ever noticed this thing. So it is beliefs and it is think that pranayama itself is able to activate your energy or we can say activating your kundalini or your shiva shakti 
each particular philosophy and parampara has different name to the things like samadhi coming to the samadhi opening to the kundalini awakening to the shiva or bringing the inner peace or bringing the inner bliss or coming near to the god or bringing that or this or that all they have different 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 uh, way of attending that things and at the same time because they have different different way of attending they also have different different uh, practices to do to attend certain things but both and each and everything is in the end come to the point that activating your energy to your own welfare activating your energy and some people say i'm feeling any activity activation of my energy means i'm you know my breathing is getting faster i see the golden light i'm seeing that my bum is moving left and right or my chest is moving don't play with this thing this is not uh, this is this is something mental illness your energy activation basically means that you become aware of yourself you become blissful in this particular moment. That's all what energy activation or the kundalini or near to the God or the samadhi, all these things. When you are coming above the suffering, when you are coming, entering into the bliss, Use of your whole wealth means most richest person is also sad somewhere when he go to the sleep or when he wake up. He is also super active and the tutor and blaming and complaining and fighting to the people. Even he is the super richest person on, on our planet, not happier, fighting to be happier, claiming to be happier, acting to be happier, showing all the luxury things to pretend that people will think that he is happier. Not. He is not, she is not most beautiful woman. Not. So who is most happier? Who is most blissful? The one who activated his energy. The one who activated himself through the prana or to the subconscious information, or to the certain kind of uh, knowledge or certain kind of practice or certain kind of asana or certain kind of uh, anything, anything which brings you to open up your own, your own wealth, how to say, when you become the most richest, your own. That's the art of the pranayama. And that's the art which you practice through your teacher, through the understanding by step by step. Don't try to look for the shortcut in this way. Like somebody will slap on your head and you will be activated your energy or somebody will slap on your bump and you will be dancing and you activated your energy or somebody like change your something in some way. Someone, someone, some, some, someone can touch and do certain things. Maybe he can do, but how long will he will it will be happening? He will be not every day on your on your slapping on your bum or kicking on your bum. He he will he or she will be not doing this. We see that there are many people those who do activation of okay. Maybe they can or maybe they don't. We are not in this topic, but how long it is stay my point is that how long you will say that this particular person make me awaken but how long it is stay here i am not to awake you you are going to awake your own soul here i'm just trying to aware you bringing that information in you bringing that understanding in you and bringing that practice in you so that through the help of prana to the help of pranayama you become healthier not only physical way when you go to the doctor but mental way when you 
feel fully regenerated, when you feel fully fantastic and fully aware and fully loveful to yourself. When you become fully loveful to yourself, you become loveful for entire creation. You become dearest to the God. You become loveful to the nature because you become your own self, the most wealthiest, healthiest in self. That's all for today's session. Now we will give one to two minutes or if somebody having any question or anything personally want to ask. Otherwise, everything I hope is very clear. And uh, if there is any doubt, feel free to write in the group. Feel free to contact me personally. Thank you for today's lesson. And I want you to practice this calming pranayama, which I told you today. Practice this and see you. Thank you so much too. And see you in the next session, Saturday, same timing, hopefully. Namaste. Have a blissful time. Bye-bye.